I spent 12 years working with Herman Wallace on a project called The House That Herman Built, where in collaboration, this man who spent 41 years in solitary confinement and myself designed a dream home with the intention of building it. When I asked him what kind of house does a man who's spent 30 and then 41 years in solitary confinement dream of, and the first thing he asked for were gardens. Herman's history is very complex. He was wrongfully convicted Black Panther political prisoner who spent four decades in solitary. He was released from prison and died three days later. And so in a lot of ways to continue Herman's legacy, I need to grow things, hope and possibility and promise. That's the birth of this project. How you doing? How was that bus ride? Oh, yeah. I'm coming. This is y'all feel like huh? What's this? Wood. What does it look like? If you stand back, what does this look like? A prison cell. Oh, yeah. These garden beds are the same size and blueprint as traditional solitary cells. This is the desk. This would be the bed where these guys are standing. Right back here is the toilet. So sometimes folks are kept in solitary confinement in a cell that's this big for, how old are you guys? 12, 14, 11. So sometimes they're kept in these cells for 9, 10, 11, 12, 14 years. This project um, requires us to to write, to have these written exchanges with folks who are in solitary confinement, who designed this garden bed. And you can see he's got three different kinds of plants in his garden bed. And so the only place that we can grow plants is where the human being can move because the bed, the desk, the table, the toilet are all cemented into the walls. Where the sink at? In, it's in the back of the toilet. Ooh. Ooh. I they treat human there. beings like that? What do they drink? It's a terrible idea. They treat human beings like that. What do they drink? And the idea that there's like 80,000, 200,000 men, women, and children who are kept in indefinite solitary confinement in the colonized United States, which means a minimum of 23 hours a day, you're in a cage. It's crazy. It's a crazy notion of justice. Solitary confinement seems to be the most extreme form of punishment within an already extremely punitive system. Like no judge or jury assigns someone to solitary confinement. It's completely at the discretion of prison officials. So people are getting put in solitary because they're pregnant or they're queer or they're the youngest person in the population or they have a disability and they're not fitting in with the rest of the population. It's otherizing within a system that's already like for the other in society. To be able to share that with as many people as possible is really the intention of the solitary gardens. And so I'm going to be driving the garden beds around and setting them up with volunteer and host institutions with this prison abolitionist vehicle called the Garrison. The Garrison is a nod to the great abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison. The word garrison is also a verb, which means to station troops. Some ways we're like nodding to this abolitionist history, but then also stationing ideas. We're stationing like possibility. We're in these spaces that are deeply and directly affected by mass incarceration um, to provide an alternative. Living in Louisiana, living in New Orleans, you really see how incarceration touches every piece and person in society. And the state incarcerates more people per capita than any other state or country on the entire planet. We build this prison cell turned garden bed. We're building it out of the byproducts of sugarcane, cotton, tobacco, and indigo the largest chattel slave crops. 
with this project. They're seeing the connection and understanding what the means of cotton, indigo, and sugar mean to us, particularly as black people. Understanding, you know, what this stuff really looks like and feels like and the tangible evidence of it. And so it's been this process, which is also transformative, of taking and literally growing these plants on site and then grinding them down and adding them to this aggregate and then building these garden wow. beds together. And my intention is to, it's poetic, right? It's to illustrate the evolution of chattel slavery into mass incarceration. And within that is that story, which, you know, sometimes if you're too didactic, people don't want to, don't want to even talk about it. But I think as an artist, you have a responsibility to like seduce and destroy. Once the garden bed is built, we will grow food and flowers and plants that somebody who's in solitary confinement is asking us to grow for them. And then what happens is those host institutions will be in correspondence with a solitary gardener, either someone they already knew or someone we pair them with. And so they will, for the course of at least two growing seasons, be growing whatever plants those gardeners want. The Look, solitary gardens, in a lot of ways, become portraits of those who are buried furthest within our carceral institutions, right? Those that we are told to most forget are then most remembered and brought to the service and surface and brought to public arenas. Honeysuckle was along the fence where I used to catch the school bus at. It provided a sweet smell for me to begin my day with. Sometimes we'd pluck the flowers and suck the honey out. Sunflowers grew in the field behind the house I grew up. We would catch grasshoppers on them so we could go fishing with them. That was a favorite pastime of mine as a kid. Marigold reminds me to go to the sun, how it shines bright every day, somewhere, whether we see it or not. Having been locked up so long, I often drift over the wires with my thoughts to visit better days. Summers are times we plant our own watermelon and cantaloupe from the seeds, from the fruit itself. It was a sense of accomplishment and a sweet treat. All the best, Dennis.